is going on guys it's your boy Cecil here bring guys the other text effect tutorial here today as every once in a while I always like to do these little text variations little text kind of effects to kind of help your your text not be so boring and stuff like that so for today I have a really cool simple very quick very awesome and just it, it's kind of like a main I call it a title text sure why not right if you see the thumbnail it actually makes my thumbnails look a little cooler just like a kind of like a main kind of like a series maybe you know text and you can just like uh, I'll show you an example um so yeah something like this right so I probably edited my thumbnail a little differently than what you see here right now but this kind of example it kind of looks like a, a main text kind of thing going on here and also the same kind of thing follows when you're doing like mascot designing stuff like that so um this is done in illustrator by the way uh, you can do the same as I think within Photoshop. We're just using the pen tool basically, and that's really it besides the text tool. And I believe the text tool also has that wrap feature that you kind of see going on here, which makes that the text look kind of like almost like a shield almost. Uh, you see like it dips down here and it continues like here. So yeah, that's the same thing you do inside Photoshop, but I, I, I'm just gonna do it in Illustrator because why the hell not? Um, So yeah, so like I said, it looks really cool here, but if you wanna do it for like something like a banner design, something like that, it looks pretty cool on a banner design, just like something really simple, uh, like a simplistic banner design, you never freaking know. But of course it does help you guys and like if you wanna do mascot designing and you wanna add a text to it, something like this would help out very, very much as well. So basically, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and write, just write, get right into it, okay? So it's not too hard whatsoever. I'm just gonna quickly move this over here. By the way, these are the color schemes I was using before. I'm just gonna use the pink one again, just because it looks pretty cool. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is obviously make a text. And uh, to do that, just make a new layer. Press T on your keyboard, or basically go, uh, let's, what is this here for? Um, go right here, right? And we're just gonna click, and we're gonna call it text, right? Of course, capitals. The font I'm using, by the way, is long shot. Uh, and the document size that I'm in uh, that I am in is 3,000 by 3,000 uh, points So basically it's a almost like almost 4k by 4k, but yeah, that's it So that's why my points are probably gonna be a little different than yours if you're you know fixing your size and just mine is like completely Way bigger than yours is it's just because that is that is the reason all right, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that We're gonna put text here right on the bottom of it I'm holding alt and shift and making a duplicate of it on the bottom. I'm gonna put variations so there Oh, now nah, I'm just gonna put effect actually text effect and then for the bottom one though, I'm gonna make that smaller. So 300 points, I believe, is what I had. There we go. I probably size it up just a little bit different, right? It's gonna hold Shift, make that a little bit bigger. Kind of eyeball it here, and that's pretty much how I'm gonna do it. So yeah, basically text effect, right? Right, uh, bigger text in the uh, the top, and then a smaller text on the bottom to kind of give me like a kind of like maybe a subtext and like main text kind of thing. However, the entire thing is gonna look like a main, almost like a badge like right over here. So it looks pretty cool. So the way to get this little uh, cool little badge effect or this little badge dip, you're just using your wrap tools, your wrap options within uh, Illustrator and in Photoshop as well. So if I just double or excuse me, click on this one, hold Shift. Click on effect as well, or basically go to your la your layer that you selected over here and click right here, which is going to select the entire layer group, the layered target focus. And then basically with this, press Control G to group everything together. That way, because if you see before, you, you won't have this wrap tool here if it's not grouped. So make sure it's grouped. That way you're good to go. And then you can click on this little wrap tool here. And then the style that I used with the, was the arch lower. So that's what I clicked on. My bend percentage was at 35%. And everything else you can like flip through, have a little fun with, and also your your font also makes it a little bit different as well. Every single time you do like a badge kind of like like thing like this, so press OK, and now we have a little cool little badge effect, right? It looks pretty cool. So after this is very very easy. All you're gonna do is make another new layer right below your main text here. I can lock it if I want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I'm just gonna lock it. And really quickly with this new layer, I'm gonna press Control R. I'm gonna put a ruler in just really quickly, just so I know where the middle is. Uh, the thing with rulers in Illustrator and uh, Photoshop, an Illustrator is going to be an actual layer. It's going to be within your layer, your guidelines. See if I turn it on or off. But in uh, Photoshop, you can use like Control H to hide your ruler. So that's just my ruler layer really quickly. And then I'm going to make a new layer for the actual cool little backdrop thing, this little little batch thing going on here. So to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and just go for it, right? I'm not going to really, you know, I don't really have to care too much about it being completely even because it's supposed to be a little, you know, fun. And it's supposed to look pretty cool. I'll just like maybe look do a little indention there. I'll try to mimic this right here. Go down. I'll mimic this little E right here. Why not? I'll like even like come down into there. Have a little fun with it. Try to find like all the indentions. So that's why I said when you have like I'm gonna delete that. When you have like a uh, a different text, it's gonna be a little different every single time, which is pretty cool. Uh, or a different font, different text. Uh, boom. Just gonna do something like that, and then we'll go down here. I'm just kind of trying to mimic the exact same kind of like it kind of dips down, right? So I'm trying to follow that same exact motion. 
with my pen tool here. And we'll do the same thing up here. Oops. Please. Thanks. And then we'll just make it like go up here and then some like that. Right, go up here, do some like this, cut it in, and then like boom, 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 and then boom. Sure. And then if you guys see, like mine is not even at the top. I didn't just move that out. I, I, can, I can like try to figure it out. But if it's not even at the top, all you really have to do is use your M tool here, which gives you the rectangle marking or rectangle tool. Usually it's rectangle marking tool in Photoshop. But the rectangle tool, make a simple rectangle scaling all the way across that little shape that you just made. And just kind of put it like so it's like this, right? So it's pretty long, right? As you can see, it's obviously going to be straight. So what you do is you hold shift and click on both the actual, both the shapes here. And then what you can do is press shift M, which brings you to your shape builder tool. And what this is, it basically helps you cut out shapes within shapes. So basically, as you can see, these are all selections now that I can actually select and then delete. So I'm going to delete right here because this is where that like line was that was not even. And so I'm just going to hold alt. As you can see, my mouse turns from plus to minus. Obviously, minus means delete. Obviously, plus means add. So I'm just going to delete it by clicking. And there we go. Now it's going to be straight right at the top. Now, also, I'm going to use the same exact thing to put that little, uh, kind of like that little chip that I have right there. I'm going to do the same exact thing right here. Uh, just something like that, right? We'll like make a nice little chip. There we go, right? So, cool. Once you have this, you're basically good to start going on with the actual, I'm gonna make this a little more bigger than actually. Control, Alt, and Shift. Make it a little bit bigger. That works. Now, for the next part, it's just basically making, uh, basically making a new layer again. And also, we're, oh, we're probably gonna change the color of this really quick. We're gonna use the same color that we used before. So I'm gonna use this vibrant pink. And then I'll change the color in a second for, uh, anyway, make a new layer right above it. And then we're just gonna go ahead and kind of mimic the bottom here again. Now, this part you can be a little more fun with if you want to, you can just do something like this. But you wanna obviously mimic the, uh, at least mimic the shape that I got going on. So this little, kind of like this little, uh, almost like U shape that I got going on. I'll mimic this still. But I'm gonna go ahead and say that's okay. Uh, and then just something like this. Right, and then some up right here, why not? And I'm gonna go all the way around, circle all the way around, connect it, and that way I'm gonna change this shape that I just created to this darker color. So basically, whatever color you choose for your, your back plate here, I have a hot pink, right? So whatever color that you guys choose, basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna select the same exact color. You can just click on the shape you just made, right? That new shape, click I, click the backdrop of that color that you used before, go to your color picker here, because it's obviously gonna select the color right here, and then just drag this down and get a darker color of it. So you get something like this, right? That's kind of what you want to go for. I already have a color that I have a little bit darker that I liked, that's right here. It's almost the same exact tone, but as you see, that's how I get the darker color there. And then basically all you gotta do is use the Shape Builder tool again, Shift M, delete on the outside, not the inside. That way it actually gets rid of everything on the outside. Kind of makes a really quick and fast trace for you guys. And I kind of don't like what this looks like over here, but we're gonna keep it for now. As you can see, it kind of gives you that cool little, uh, kind of like a drop shadow almost. Yes and no at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and just like dip that down. Cool. So you can edit as much as you want. As you can see, I'm not very satisfied with this so far, but it looks good, it looks okay. And really quickly as well, to change the color of your text, what you're gonna have to do is actually, as you can see, if I try to change my color, it's not going to, even if I try to like get rid of it, it's not going to, it's because it's, it's in this envelope, right? It's in the envelope, meaning it's in a group and a mesh. So basically what I'm gonna do to unlock this envelope, I'm gonna go ahead and go to, I believe it's object. Uh, envelope distort and then go to release that'll release the mesh and basically that's the distort that we use for the wrap I'll get rid of it for now. Just drag it down to the delete Go back to my group change the color to white because that's what I want, right? So change it to white and then just basically reapply the mesh just again, right? Because it's already still in a group lower It's gonna be the same exact thing and I'll just move it back up there. I'll shrink it down a little bit again there we go, right? So pretty much back to square one, but I had to change the color to the inside of it to white. And now basically, I'm not entirely done yet. I still have to, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna fix this just a little bit. Not too satisfied. Also, I kind of want to get rid of these edges here. So I'm gonna use the Shape Builder tool once again and just kind of get rid of those edges. Because I want it like flat, I want like a flat look to it, like something like that. Right? That's pretty cool. All right, cool. So basically what I'm gonna do next is the on the bottom of everything, make another new layer. I can lock everything if I need to. Use the pen tool again, and I'm just gonna select right up here. 
and kind of give myself more like darker shades of that one color. So basically connect it and use the darker shade, the same exact shade that you use down here. And then kind of do the same thing on the other side. Uh, we'll use it like right there. There we go. And then why not put it also right in here? Right? Uh, boom. Sweet. Perfect. Now, as you can see, you pretty much get that same exact little effect that I had before. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, that's the same exact thing that I had going on here. The drop shadow here, all I did was basically take my uh, text layer here, which is right here. Make a duplicate by holding Alt and then dragging a layer below it. It'll make a duplicate uh, of everything in that layer right below it, just, as, just like that. Or you can drag it into the new uh, fake page there. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do what I did here. So basically, I'm going to have to ungroup this again. Object, distort, release. We're going to change this color to, I'll say, the same as that color as this, right? And then what I'll do is I'll remesh it. Same exact bend level. I'm just going to go ahead and move it up. Well, let's uh, make sure we lock everything so I don't click anything else. Move it up to basically where you want to have it. Maybe around there. There you go. You get the same exact cool little effect. It looks really cool. So like I said, if you use different fonts, if you use like, I don't know, make your, your little badge going around a lot different or a lot cooler. I don't really know. You, you have an idea. Maybe you want to try it out. Why the hell not? But it looks really cool and stuff for like that for like thumbnails. Then I know I'm going to use it myself. So that's why I wanted to show you guys. I know I'm going to get asked about it. Also, like I said before, mascot designing and stuff like that, you probably end up finding yourself using this as well to put like right below the mascot that you just made and be like, you know, this is the organization that links to this mascot. So really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, it's really cool, really fun. I can just, all you gotta do is drag it into Photoshop after that and you're pretty much all good to go. Uh, I freaking unlock, I didn't unlock my other layer. Rip. Boom. Right? You can just drag it right in. You're really just honestly good to go. And it's vectorized, so you can make it as big, as small as you want because it will just, oh, freaking jeez. Did I not unlock the other layer? Oh, rip. All right, that was a pretty much good fail. There we go. As all the layers are unlocked, I'll throw it into Photoshop. And as you can see, now the layer is uh, rasterized, which means it's a vector, of course, because you made it inside Illustrator. So you make it super small. And then later on, you want to be like, yo, I don't like it that small. I'm going to make it super big. It won't lose any uh, kind of like, you know, obvious quality and stuff like that. So yeah. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm a fan of it. It's a really cool little thing I wanted to show you guys because, you know, why the hell not? And, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And, yes, I will be doing an intro tutorial of the current intro that I have now. Okay, I, I see you guys in the comment section. I will be doing it very, very soon. But I just want to give this little tutorial out just because I kind of wanted to show you guys how to do this. It's really cool for me. And I thought it was going to be cool for you. If you guys like it, don't forget to leave a like. If you guys want to see anything else, let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys are not subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe. And, of course, check out my Twitter uh, or follow me on Twitter. Sesway HQ at Sesway HQ, I meant. And uh, yeah, follow my Selfie. You know, look all, all my cool stuff. Selfie.com slash Sesway HQ for any pre mades and packs as well as three bucks. And yeah, maybe enjoy the everything pack for one purchase of $30. You get everything in my store and everything that comes out for free. So hope you guys enjoy your weekend, all that cool stuff. And I'll talk to you guys later. Sesway HQ out. And how many of you guys are actually going back to college or high school or whatever next week? Because I will be. Oh, God, I'm not ready. All right. So yeah, see ya.